If it's your goal to become a data analyst as fast as possible, then this video is for you. I will be sharing the five most important skills you need to succeed. You're busy, I'm busy, we're all busy, so I'll skip all the fluff and keep this video as short as possible. Let's dive straight into it. The technical skills you need are mostly SQL or SQL, sometimes Python and a small amount of Excel. You also need to have knowledge about a reporting tool. I would recommend Power BI. This is the tool I've used in 90% of my projects and the amount of companies using it is increasing. There are videos on YouTube explaining how to learn these skills already. But what I've noticed is missing are the non-tech skills which are essential to become a good data analyst. And based on five years of working experience within the industry, I've discovered non-tech skills are the difference between an average and a great data analyst. We will discuss five skills, how you can develop those skills, and a good, a bad example of each. Number one, problem solving. As data analysts, you will encounter a lot of challenges and obstacles while working with data. In a lot of situations, things won't work straight away. You get an error message while writing code. You solve it, then you get five new ones. But it's very important to not consider this as a problem. But in the end, you will gain knowledge from this. And it might sound contradicting, but I call this positive frustration. In order to deal with this, having problem solving skills is essential. You can have five programming languages, you can know three reporting tools, but if you don't have problem solving skills, you won't become an effective data analyst. This is also the reason why if you go to job interviews at tech firms, they often ask you your logical reasoning behind solving a problem. So it's not only about writing code because you can always search for functions on Google. It's more about your logical reasoning behind the writing of this code. This will determine how you can solve problems effectively. Having problem solving skills is essential because this skill will help you to break down a complex problem into smaller, more manageable parts and develop structured approaches to find solutions. The goal of these solutions is to analyze the root cause and have a effective strategy to solve the problem. Okay, here I need to be completely honest with you. There are no shortcuts. The only way to improve the skill is by practice. But this doesn't mean you need to start from scratch. There are a lot of analytical techniques and frameworks which you can find online. And to figure the ones out that make the most sense in your particular case and the problem you want to solve. So the framework you're using needs to be relevant for your specific problem. There are a lot of techniques you can use. I want to keep this video as short as possible for you, so don't have time to discuss them all. However, I will be sharing one very powerful analytical technique I've used many times. It's called the 5Y framework. And in this technique, you ask why multiple times. It helps you to discover the root cause of a problem instead of treating the symptoms. Let's have a look at an example together. So we have a company which faces the problem that sales are declining. Why are sales declining? Customers are not really satisfied with the product. Why do you think customers are not satisfied with the product? Well, the product's performance does not meet their expectations. Why is there a mismatch between performance and customer expectations exactly? We believe the product was not perfectly tested before its launch. Why was the product not sufficiently tested before its launch? We simply didn't have enough resources and we were pressured by time. So why was there a lack of resources and time constraints? To be honest, the project timeline was underestimated and they didn't take proper testing into account. So as you can see in this example, it seemed like declining sales was the issue, but deep down it was insufficient testing. Let's get back to problem solving. So here's a bad example. A data analyst is faced with a complex data analysis problem, which makes him feel overwhelmed. He decides to give up and concludes it's impossible. So here's a good example. The data analyst encounters an error code while executing a function. He knows there are many functions out there, but he decides to peel the onion and focus on the part of the script at once. He systematically debugs the code step by step and finds the line that triggered the error. He resolves the error and makes the script working again. So the key takeaway here is instead of trying to fix a bigger problem all at once, you break it down in more manageable chunks and you focus on each of those at a time. Number two, communication skills. This one is by far the most overlooked. We like to work technically, but you won't become a good data analyst before you have excellent communication. In your job, you will work with many stakeholders, technical, not technical, and everything in between. In order to provide your findings in a clear manner, you need communication skills. You should be able to translate technical concepts into clear and understandable language for non-technical people. But there's more. Good communication also means active listening, collaboration with others, and asking insightful questions. I've learned you can never ask too many questions. So your teacher in high school was probably right. Stupid questions don't exist. We can divide communication skills into two categories, written and verbal. 
You can improve your written communication by practicing clear and concise writing, using the least amount of words to provide the point you're making. Also, you should organize your thoughts logically so that the order of your analysis makes sense. A simple rule of thumb you can use is the following. If you can leave out a specific part and the whole still makes sense, then it's probably redundant, which means you can make it shorter. And last but not least, you should use the language which suits your audience the best. But more importantly is to improve your verbal communication because you will spend five times more communicating this way. You improve the skill by giving presentations, public speaking opportunities, and active participation during team discussions. For me, communicating with others comes quite naturally, but I can also understand that for some of you, it might feel more uncomfortable at first. But trust me, this will get better. So here's a bad example. You sent an email with technical words and complex charts to a non-technical team. They have no clue what you're talking about and they're unable to interpret the findings. So you leave them basically more confused than before. It's really important to always keep in mind that the things that are really familiar to you and common sense might be completely new for others. So the moment you start discussing correlations versus regression with your business audience, you already lost them. Rather than using complex charts and visuals, which look fancy, you kill your darlings and keep only the most relevant and simple ones. You make it more understandable for them by linking your analysis to concrete business examples to strengthen your point. Based on my experience, I've learned that we analysts, we like to make things as complex as possible. We like to do a lot of analyses, but business people, they don't care. They simply want to get an answer and move on. So here's a bonus tip. In the end, always make sure to do a quick question whether everything was clear or not, instead of assuming that it was because assumptions are your biggest enemy as data analyst. Number three, business understanding. This one might come as a surprise to you, but actually understanding the business context is more important than you think. If you don't have the business context, then it becomes really difficult to judge and validate the data because the numbers you're seeing, they don't have much meaning to you. In order to make sense of the logic you built, you need to understand its context. This means you should understand the bigger picture, what your analysis is being used for within the organization, and how this is linked to the objectives and priorities for the organization you work for. And there's actually something very interesting which I found out. Because if you're more proactively searching to learn more about the business context, you'll be better able to perform analyses proactively. So you will give your business users the insights before they even know they need them. So in the end, they will come back for you to do your analyses. So basically you're strengthening your own position. You can improve your business knowledge by taking time to understand the industry you're working in, understanding what is currently relevant for your business and by staying up to date with market trends outside your organization. So for example, I work in the financial services industry. And one thing that is really relevant right now is that governmental institutions are forcing banks to be really secure with the data privacy. So for me as a data analyst, this helps me to understand how can I achieve the best data security practices for the data I'm working on. So here's a bad example of business understanding. You spend a lot of time building extensive analyses and dashboards without even taking the business context into account. In the end, this results into irrelevant insights or even worse, incorrect analysis. So here's a good example instead. You proactively do your research on industry competitors, potential market opportunities, and provide a data-driven recommendation to the marketing team. This results in improved campaign strategies. Number four, attention to detail. I would consider this skill really underrated because it's a lot of times overlooked. It's a skill which is more of a supportive skill for your other data analysis skills instead of the main skill. For you as a data analyst, you will be dealing with huge amounts of data. And even a small oversight can have serious consequences or even incorrect analysis. So by having an attention to detail, you will ensure that you provide accuracy and quality of your data. You can improve this skill by making it a habit to double check your work. So explore the calculations and logic you've built by testing it. At each step of testing, you should ask yourself the question, what is the result I'm expecting to see? And then you validate whether it makes sense or not. This might sound strange, but you should always assume you did something wrong instead of assuming everything was correct. We are all human and we make mistakes. But by doing this, you prevent from making mistakes and providing high quality data analysis. So you reduce the chance of making errors. And once in a while, we all make a mistake and don't be afraid to make those mistakes. But the most important thing is to learn from these mistakes. And one way to do this is by to document them and write down how you solve this mistake. Don't make the same mistake twice. So here's a bad example. We have a data analyst who overlooks the data transformation and cleaning steps before importing the data. This results in error later in the process. In the end, debugging costs the analyst more time to discover what the real problem was instead of having performed a good check initially. That just goes to show that if you're really thorough with your analysis and you do a lot of checks, 
it can save you a lot of time later on by needing to debug and fix the issue. So here's a good example what you should do instead. A data analyst carefully reviews the data set for inconsistencies, performs data validation checks, and identifies and resolves outliers or missing values before proceeding with analysis. He makes sure he checks everything twice. Number five, continuous learning. The field of data analysis is not only changing constantly, but also very quickly, and even more quick than other industries or markets. By being curious and having a thirst for self-development, it will help you to learn new skills and to deal with changing technologies more effectively. Having a continuous learning mindset will also help you to embrace change and don't look at change as a threat, but rather as an opportunity to develop yourself. You can improve these skills by adopting a mindset of lifelong learning. So here's a bad example of someone who doesn't take the effort to develop himself. A data analyst relies only on his current knowledge and avoids exploring new technologies. He stays in a comfort zone and assumes things won't change that quickly. Here's a good example instead. By attending training sessions, he learns new data visualization techniques. He also discovers by discussion with his peers that more and more companies are using Microsoft Azure. So he decides to learn more about it by taking a course. And there's something very interesting that I noticed. Being the data analyst that I am, I looked at the data analytics from my own channel and I noticed that the majority of you are not subscribed to my channel yet. So, it will be really awesome if you like this video, subscribe to my channel and this will help me a lot to keep making videos for you. See you next time.